Cool. Thank you for uh, joining, Shay. No, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So right now in our tool belt, we can instantiate variables with const, let, and um, var. Mm -hmm. so data types. So which one do we know? We know string. String, number, uh, Boolean. Yeah, object, arrays. Uh... Define, null. We have uh, conditionals like if, else, else, if, else. And we have switch case with the default mm -hmm. and we have for loops and while loops. You know, we can encapsulate all those things inside of uh, these things called functions. So basically we have a huge file that we're writing our files in right now, uh, mm -hmm. code right now. But functions let you execute uh, enclosed code inside of those functions. So uh, there's these scopes that are like uh, defined by these curly braces. And the, inside the curly brace, uh, you can put logic in there and then you can save it and um, you can run it later. Functions in JavaScript are blocks of code that can be reused throughout a program. You know, in a file, we're just writing the code and you can only run it once. So mm -hmm. if you can put it in a function, you can call it many times. All right, so they're defined using the function keyword. So like const, let, and var, function will be another uh, keyword. So okay. uh, function followed by a name. So space, any name you want, and a set of parentheses. And the code block is then enclosed in curly braces. So the curly braces look like this. Yep. All right, functions can take parameters, which are variables that are passed to the function when it is called. These parameters can be used within the function to perform some action. So that would kind of look like function sum, and then you pass two numbers, and then you can use these uh, parameters within your code. Functions can also return a value using the return keyword. But yeah, it makes sense. But when I'm actually using it, I think that's where it starts uh, not doing what I want it to do. Okay, I think it just takes some, um, you know, trial and error and practice <laughs> and doing it over and over again. Like I said, it's not going to feel comfortable like every single time, you mm -hmm. know? And yeah, yeah. Too comfortable, you're not growing. So it's just like, uh, you know, when you're boxing at the gym, you know, and it's too easy <laughs> for something. You're not really making any piece of your muscle getting better. Mm. <laughs> You know, like uh, today I was uh, boxing and I was like, I haven't bought, like I started boxing and I've been boxing like heavily for like the last month. Mm -hmm. Like now, like my, uh, my like body and stuff is coming back a little bit, but like, I forgot to bend my knees like all the way. So I was like, <laughs> and I was shadow boxing and I was like, and like I was bending my knees a little bit and I realized, oh dude, this, this hurts. There's a reason why I wasn't bending my legs, you know? Yes. <laughs> so uh, now I'm bending my legs and I'm having a lot more balance, you know? Mm -hmm. But like, I was thinking like, oh, dude, right right after I throw a right hand, I don't know why I'm not stepping back anymore. Uh, <laughs> I, and, uh, like, I don't know, like, but the, like now I think my muscle memory a little bit is coming back, but mm -hmm. So I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm going on a little rant on this, but um, <laughs> it, it's okay to feel uncomfortable, you know? It means you're getting better. You know, and especially like, don't ever think I'm going to lead you in like the wrong way or something. I'm always like trying to say things that make sense in my mind, but it might not make sense for you yet. If it doesn't make sense, you can find other examples and maybe I can try to iterate or uh, verbalize it a different way. Yeah, yeah. Because I remember when you, you had mentioned too, just about the variables being like that pocket, like and we need, it's going to hold something. And so a lot of times when I was trying to get the return thing, it was because like, I, I couldn't get it to return like where I thought it was going to be. But as long as I made that pocket that you mentioned and like, hey, give this information back to that pocket, like put it in that pocket, then yeah. it would kind of work. Feels like sometimes there's code where it says return. And I'm like, I have no idea where it's going, but it ends up somewhere. If that makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. Some Sometimes you just see a return with no value return. And that yeah, is, yeah. The function is returning undefined, but it's running something in, in the function that's changing some outside factor, probably. So there's some stuff like that. But if it's always returning a value, you're always going to have to catch it with some variable or something. Okay. So the syntax would be a function space. So kind of like var, const, and let function. Mm -hmm. 
a new way to instantiate some uh, new piece of uh, variable. So function, function name, and then you see the uh, parentheses. And this parameter doesn't always have to be there, but you can pass however many parentheses, uh, however many parameters you want here. And parameters are just variables that you can use within this scope of code in the curly brace. Cool. So we have functions in the functions file now. Mm -hmm. uh, functions, functions are a way to group code together to, to, to perform a specific task. So function, function name, and then block of code to be executed. So on line 12, I have, a, uh, I have instructions on line 11. Let's write a function called greet that takes a name as an argument and returns a greeting message. So let's use the return keyword here. So then I'm doing, uh, I can still use name as a variable, even though it's in my parameter. So I still could use name. You could, yeah. And that's an empty string that I'm using. And then it'll be, then it would just be return, but that that doesn't seem. Exactly. But now, you don't need the parentheses though. So in my return, I can still do like some type of, like a, a formula still like in a, in a return. No matter what. Yeah, you can. Okay. I, I didn't even know. I thought the return was like, hey, it's like, it has to be set. Oh, no, 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 no. You can, you can do a whole bunch of stuff as long as uh, it's not a promise. But um, okay. I'll, I'll let you know about that in a second. Okay. <laughs> you can return promises, though, but you have to resolve them as else places. So um, you could actually, I'm just going to write some code on line uh, 11, 12, and 13. Okay. So if I put, like function um, string, right? I can just say return string. And I can say function num return five and i can say function bool return true so these guys all have a uh, three return statements right mm -hmm. function, and then i if so basically this will be something like string right mm -hmm. so if i just ran this we wouldn't we, we wouldn't be able to do anything with the return value right well it's not going to return just the word string yeah, it'll it'll return the string, but we'd have to string call. Let's call it like this. And then um now this return value, this string right here, will be inside of string call. Okay. So if I just uh console.log string call, it, it'll say string, right? But yeah, I think this might be a little bit confusing. Here, if I just call string, I wouldn't catch it at with anything, right? So it wouldn't it wouldn't have any output. But if I just console dot log the return, this would be string, right? Because this console log is taking the is uh, expecting some kind of value inside of here, right? So this right. could be quite confusing. So I guess I don't. I think like maybe it's too too much is blank right now. Like because I mean whether you're returning or console log or either one of those is still going to say string, right? In the terminal. Exactly. But if, I, but if I type in, if there's something in the actual parameter of it, so even if I put like Steve. But you wouldn't pass or, Steve here, right? You'd pass name here, right? Right. Then so then if I call it. And you return name here. That makes sense versus the blank parameter and then returning string, I guess. Okay, no, I totally understand. So then if I put Steve here, right? Right, and then it should return. Steve. I should see Steve in the comp, yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> cool. Like I make a lot of these, um, these functions that return values in my code for some reason, cause it's a good way for me to kind of organize things. I'll do something like a function. Let's just uh, say code lesson, right? Mm -hmm. And here I'll just re I'll return something like um, an ID, uh, date, lesson name. And then I'll return something like uh, this dot. ID equals ID 
this dot date equals date this dot lesson. <laughs> These are called like factory functions. They uh it's not part of the lesson at all. It's just um <laughs> the way factory factory functions. Factory functions are like very clean prototypes that uh won't mess with your database or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, today's we can say like today lesson equals new code lesson. And then we'll call this like um we'll say ID one and we'll say uh new date and two eyes of string, and we'll say lesson name with shade. And this is kind of like a way that I write my code to keep it very clean and concise. Hans names. All right. So we got um Mark, Tom, and Travis. All right. So then we have and then we have a function called um greet, and then that takes a name as a parameter. And just so what we're expecting it to do, right? Let's do. It's gonna be a string and the name, name of person returns hello. Hello. Hello, name. So that's how it's supposed to look, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So that's what it's doing now. Let's just do it this way. Quick. So then if we do the four, let i equals zero, i on names.lang, i plus plus. And then we do a uh, console.log on greets. at names i all right so we should be seeing hello mark hello tom hello travis right right yes so hello mark hello tom hello travis so then what if i were to say um function capitalize name so this is going to take something called uh name right we'll just call it n and let's just return n to upper case plus n dot slice at one and then it will capitalize the it, so you can kind of encapsulate some um logic within there right and the way mm -hmm. that we talk to this capitalized name is through this parameter, right? And the right. way we this greet and the greet was able to use uh something outside was through a parameter, right? And mm -hmm. then I return something to greet, and we're able to use that value inside of greet. So let's just say that um Name is so that would be the same thing. Is there any questions about this code that we wrote now? I mean, I I I get it. Uh, okay. like what's going on, but at the same time. It's not like I don't see how is it capitalized name, but and then it's, so it's actually the first time that that function capitalized name is actually running is when it's in the return. So the first time capitalized name is running is on on Mark. No, the... I mean the actual because like you know how we create the function but then when you actually like want to run it you you don't type out function all the time you would just write greet name and then the name right call to call the function yeah 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 so the first time that function capitalized name 
is actually being called is on line number 28. Is that correct? On line 26. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't I don't know. That looks weird that it's actually like running inside of a variable that's a constant, but it's not so we can make this a let it, it'll still work the same, but it never gets reassigned. So I just mm. made it. Okay, yeah, I guess I I didn't know that that was like a thing to run a function in, inside of a, of a variable, or you could call you could call a function inside of a variable. Yeah, it's kind of just returning outside of the. Uh, it returns the value from that scope to be used outside of that scope. And that's what the return's actually doing. Holy smokes. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Now it seems like the not like now you're running like that function three different times inside that variable sum. And so then oh. when I console log sums, I should be getting three uh seven and 11 in a new array. Correct. Maybe? Okay. Perfect. So so then if I, I do don't know like, why that makes more sense to me than the, than I think the, it's the uh, bucket analogy that we had earlier, but it's like uh, putting things into a bucket. You know? Yeah. 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 Thumbs that length and then I plus plus. And then and I think it's a good use case, like a good scenario for when you'd use it. Like you want to, because you don't want to always be like calculating on the fly. Really? Mm -hmm. You want to, you want to do it in the beginning. And then when like the guy's ready to, or a person's ready to like see whatever calculations already happened, you don't want any loading time or waste memory there. Right. If mm -hmm. you can front load those tasks. So. So now we, if we ran this, it would say, oh crap, it's, oh crap. Sorry, I never, uh, my condition. Do you know why that happened? I didn't, I didn't see the error. Oh, undefined. Because uh, we never defined what sums was. No, wait, sum, sum, sums out length, I plus plus. Oh, we never actually ran, we never called the function. No. Right? No? Hold on, no, because sums calls it. Yeah, so let's just look, let's look on line 45. Can you find the error? Four, let i equal zero sums. Oh, uh, your i needs to be less than. Right, so can you, can you do that on line 45 real quick? Yep. Cool. I'll just save it, and then I'll run the code. Cool, so we got three, seven, and 11, right? 